dealing with the, the Hebrew letters, you know, and each one represents a certain frequency and then putting those together, you know, all these, you know, there's a whole realm there that in a way, the old Testament is like a gateway, a, a blockade that blocks us because we don't have the right frequency of understanding and of sound to go through to what the ancients were actually all about. And we're not seeing, you know, we see the angry God, Yahweh striking down though, those evil sodomites. And we don't, we don't understand. We don't understand. That's not really what the Bible is saying. That that's a surface understanding. There's a deeper meaning to it. In other words, I'll just take it, take that example, Sodom and Gomorrah. And, uh, you know, it's all, it was all about Abraham pleading the case. Couldn't you spare the city if there's 25 righteous? What if there's 20 righteous? What if there's 15 righteous? What if there's 10? And then God goes away. If once again, there was a, a meaning in that, that was to be spread far and wide to the world so that people could keep their kingdoms intact. So they would understand there's a mathematical, mathematical equation in things from the spirit that affect the earth. And if the rulers understood this, even evil rulers, then they would be able to keep their communities from being destroyed. You see what I mean? It was God's insurance policy to say, you know, you can go this far, but no farther. Once it gets beyond this certain point, then it will be destroyed. You see, that was meant to be a lesson and entering into an understanding. Now, it did not keep, it did not keep uh, the Jews from captivity in Babylon. But the understanding is also esoteric because it also means that within you, there's a certain <clears throat> percentage going on. Now, that percentage that you have, once it gets past a certain percentage in your vessel, then you encounter the second death as spoken of in the book of Revelation. And you see, you can go so far, but any further than a certain line, you end up dying. You're given grace up to that point. You know, you as a vessel like Sodom, say, as a vessel, you would be allowed to go so far. I mean, you can sin. You can certainly, um, you know, have any kind of sex you want. You can do drugs. You can steal. You can lie. You can cheat. But then there's a certain point where that kind of sin takes over. And where it goes to a point where there's no return, which becomes the second death. And that also exists for those in secret societies. They take an oath against Christ, basically. An oath to keep the people here enslaved and keep them from ascending on a prison planet. Um, and so they vow to do the bidding of Lucifer and the, the power grid, figuring that Lucifer will be their salvation, that he's the true God the light bringer, the God of light who will bring humanity into an evolutionary uplifting place. And so they guard the secret and they've been given great wealth and technology to prove that, you know, it's all, it's, you know, they're great rewards for serving, you know, almost mistaking this idea that our own divinity is really what God's intention is all about. In other words, we become like gods and that's really what, our evolution is all about. And that appeals to man immensely. And so he joins the secret societies to serve Lucifer for the purpose, because if it wasn't about Lucifer, it wouldn't be secret. So they, you know, to, for the purpose of personal evolution and personal godhood. And the Bible even says these people will be like gods. You know, they, they, they in other words, they have the freedom to go to and fro. They become in a way sacred vessels under themselves, supernatural, I should say, vessels under themselves with the ability to go to and fro, warp space time, um, you know, create all manner of things, but they're still out They're They're still kept out of the kingdom of God. They miss it. And so when they get out in space, it's a very lonely thing, very lonely, lonely, lonely. And um, the entire reality that they live in is very lonely because it's, in the end, it's nothing more than the very, very sophisticated video game. Adventures, you can go around this, you can go on Space Mountain, you can go to the moon, you can warp space time, go back in time, go forward in time, go to these different worlds, see different beings, have a Star Wars experience. But all of it is simply an e-ticket at Disneyland. None of it is real. 
It's all mind. It all comes from the mind. It's a series of mind. From mind comes matter. Mind moves matter. But what moves mind? So they will always be behind the eight ball because they will never be in a position where they understand what moves mind. If it's a series of mind, then what, what creates the series of mind? What's behind the series of mind? And the answer is I am. And anything other than that is not. Thus an illusion or a lie. So becoming a vessel of light, my friends, is really the end of your journey. I mean, that's the, and the beginning of your journey. I mean, that's what it's all leading to. That would look like in today's terms, an old person would be walking up. I don't care if they're riddled with cancer or anything else. They would be still a vessel of light wherever they go. They would not be affected one way or the other by wars, earthquakes, rumors of wars, um, you know, financial ups and downs. It wouldn't, nothing really, you know, they just, it, it's got nothing to do with what, there's a different plane of existence there that those things don't, wouldn't enter in because they're not going on at that plane, yet they would still be with us upon the earth, but they wouldn't be completely flesh, if you understand my meaning there. Like I used to talk about back in 2002, an 80-20 mixture would be ideal. Maybe it's more like a 50-50 mixture, but the mixture today is 80-20, 80% for, for, for most believers too, in, in God and who understand their, their place in this whole thing. The 80-20 is more like 80% flesh and 20% spirit. And a vessel of light would reverse those. It'd be 80% spirit and 20, uh, just enough flesh to be here, but would be really a spirit in the material realm, which is what is, is God is raising those up. Now, once a person gets to that point, they are no longer in, in prison and wherever they go, they don't need to speak anymore either, but they would thwart, they would be like, yeah, points of light upon the world. But what they would do is they would, you know, shatter the darkness by existing. And of course, they would have tremendous joy and love to give because the light that comes from a being like that hits everybody and benefits all, gives hope to, just radiates healing to all people. The, the sheen that a Luciferian gets or a satanic person gets or a ritual doing pagan gets, there's a sheen, a glow that, that and that's been documented. I see, I I can see those glows. They're very, very visible. That sheen does not. You might notice you could get right up to a person's face. Let's say if it's giving off that sheen at the time, put your hand as close to their head as possible without you know threatening them to you know, and you'll see that that sheen that you see doesn't reflect off your hand. It does not give you any light. There are ships when they travel. There are spheres. They are illuminated if they come into your room or if they, you know, you might see them, these orbs. A lot of times those are witches, you know, that's their broomstick is the orb. They jump in the orb and go somewhere, right? <laughs> anyway, they, um, you may notice they glow in the dark, but you could go right up next to it. Put your hand next to that orb and it doesn't give your hand any light. It doesn't give you any love or any light. It only takes it's a parasite. It takes to, to produce that energy it's producing for all the things it is. Very high technology. But what it's doing is sucking in light from the atmosphere around. When, I, when you are God's vessel of light, you give the light for free to everybody. Light meaning, you know, really in its very essence, the Logos or the Word or Christ. Light is a very fierce term because it, it, it is literally the thing that gives life to mankind. The force that actually causes man's heart to beat. And when a being radiates this light, one that is of refractive light that illuminates in the darkness but gives off no light to anyone else, they can't stand next to that because that light being um, eliminates the other being. In other words, they disappear into the darkness. One light being the true light, one light being the manufactured light that gives the sheen to those who do. See, because a ritual is simply technology. It's not just about the, the evil, you know, killing of the baby to, 
you know, please the God and then the God manifests and everyone gets a sheen, um, you know, understood, you know, that's a big thing. Um, a lot of premature, you know, there's a lot of breeders out there that give, they have like a premature abortion, right? And then that fetus is used in the, to make it legal. <laughs> the fetus is used in the ritual to make it legal. Um, but this is all folly upon them, but they do get a sheen when they do it. When they come out of a ritual like that, you'll see they have a sheen on them. They have powers. They can, they decide they want you to trip and fall down the road when they're behind you and you, and you trip and fall. They decide that so-and-so should have a traffic accident and lo and behold, they get, you know what I mean? They get powers to a certain, right? But it, it all applies. It all has to do with identifying the material world as the real realm to be used in this realm. They want to expand this material realm to all the stars and wormholes. And just like you had that Norway uh, portal that opened up in Norway this last year. And, and most people didn't understand they're opening up um, wormholes and grids to, you know, back in time, forward in time, you know, through the state space time continuum. And most people just thought it was, you know, some kind of a laser or something. They didn't understand that it was like a portal. It's like a, like a, a Stargate. You know, so, but, but what can anyone do about it? How's that going to benefit anyone? And it makes a little manifestation and you see it more troubling are the earthquake, uh, uh, sonic earthquake machines that use sound and frequency. Harp can do this to create, um, my proof is for you musicians, uh, when you use sound, um, and you use a filter on say a, a synth bass, on your synthesizer and then you put a filter on it to, to, to really bring the low out and you're filtering it. And then you punch that you can actually break your speakers and your eardrums with that. How many of you have come close to damaging your equipment or your ears by playing with filters and bass, you know, using a filter on a bass, you know what I'm talking about? Okay. Well, so the earthquake weapon is very similar. You, you simply are amplifying that low frequency, which is what happens when you filter a bass, you're amplifying that low frequency and then that starts popping your speakers. You may not hear it, but you feel it. Okay, go down a few more octaves and you can't hear it at all, but it can actually break a mountain into a million pieces. Okay, this is a sonic weapon. All right, some of these are used now for crowd control, for, it's called non-lethal weapons, but they will break your eardrums. And, um, you know, they kind of try to keep this a secret, but I mean, they can move the earth. They can cause a pole flip with this stuff. I'm surprised they haven't. They've already screwed it up pretty much using it. Could they have used it in Japan? Yeah, but what's the point? Yes, they can. Um, why haven't they done it every other day to every country then? You know, uh, there's a force that holds it back. There was some that wrote uh, recently a, a so-called prophecy. It was posted on a Facebook page that they predicted Japan would have big quakes. And this is back, um, you know, uh, you know, 16 years ago, they make this prophecy. They say it's a prophecy. Yahweh told me this because the J and they broad brush all the Japanese as being uh, a prideful and self-reliant nation that needs to be humbled by God. So earthquakes are coming their way. Well, it's fine. If you want to say a prophecy like that, say it six months ago, say it last week, but don't bother me with 15 years ago, you know, in that way. The other thing is you can't broad brush a whole people like that. That's racist. I mean, that, that is the definition of racism. The Japanese are a self-reliant, proud people, and therefore they're going to be smashed. You could say that about any people on the earth. Anybody. I winced at this. I, when I see people claiming to be prophets that speak like this, I absolutely go crazy with rage. Because first of all, the Japanese are a very diverse culture. 